And I thought to myself, who could kill such an innocent child? Cell, I'm begging you, don't! This is part one of an ongoing series and was created by Jairus Smith. Support him on Twitter and catch up fully using the links below. A few months have passed since our hero's stunning win in the Tournament of Power. Goku and friends are enjoying a time of peace. And Frieza departed without a trace. Lord Beerus returned to his planet in an attempt to get a little shut-eye. However... <sighs> something has awoken him from his slumber. He explains how it's hard to sleep after such a glorious win, though he definitely had his doubts at times. Whis is no different. He too believed there were moments they were surely done for, but Goku and the others came through in the end, and in stunning fashion, he might add. The way Frieza and Goku combined their strength was remarkable. And then there's Vegeta and Goku. The two of them have come a long way since the Destroyer first encountered him. Even since the tournament, they've reached new heights. Beerus thinks back on both of them. Specifically, Vegeta's evolved blue state, and Goku's mastered ultra instinct. The angel comments that with challenges like the Tournament of Power, there's no telling how far those Saiyans can go. Beerus admits he's right. It seems that one of them will pose a legitimate challenge to him soon. That's when Whis mentions Gohan. He remarks that, believe it or not, Goku's son, who was part of their win in the tournament, once surpassed even his father when he was just a boy. But is he serious? That's hard to believe, especially given he was eliminated relatively early. Using a staff, the attendant shows him firsthand. This is ridiculous! Where was all this during the tournament? It's likely what the staff shows is either the defeat of Perfect Cell or Ultimate Gohan taking on Majin Buu. It's explained that Gohan doesn't share his father's taste for a challenge in terms of fighting. He was even reluctant to join the tournament to begin with until he learned what was at stake. However, Beerus just feels this is a waste of power. Taking a seat, the angel tells how Gohan's only focus and concerns lie with his wife, child, and being what the Earthlings call a scholar. Though if he had this much power as a child, one can only imagine what hidden power he currently has locked away. Whis actually agrees with the statement. However, his inner strength seems to come from the loss of life and not the thrill of a challenge, which supports his earlier theory about him in regards to his motivation to fight and loss of life. This fact prompts Beerus to ask Whis to show him his previous battles again. Stopping on his battle against Cell, he shouts that one, believing this to be the fight which stands out most, commanding Whis to bring this one to him. But does he mean Cell himself? On Earth, we spot our heroes taking the day to enjoy the beach, reminiscing and echoing the words of the deities. Gohan admits there are moments in the tournament he really didn't think they were gonna win. And Goku knows. In fact, he's sure everyone had doubts at times, especially knowing what was at stake. But they all pulled through in the end and it was a team effort. Krillin adds that they all played their part. Dare he say even Frieza helped with the whole thing. With a bit of a shudder, Gohan is aware of all this, but he feels he himself could have done more. He neglected his training so much that they had to team up with Frieza of all people. In doing so himself, he sacrificed himself to take out Dispo. Goku comforts his son and presses that he has to stop beating himself up. He did the best he could and he's proud of him. A statement Krillin agrees with. But Gohan... is apprehensive to side with him. When Bulma interrupts to ask if everyone's enjoying the sun. Jumping up. Our hero is the first to chime in that as much as he likes to annoy everyone with his constant training, it's nice to get them all together like this and have a good time every once in a while. Who couldn't agree more with such a statement? Chi Chi adds to this. She'd love for her husband to spend more time at home with his family. But of course, he'll just find some excuse to go train. Time after time. And speaking of training, he's curious where Vegeta is anyway. Someone who is training. He's back at the house. He'd rather do what he does every day instead of being here. Which... tracks? That sure sounds like Vegeta. Cueing Goku to follow suit. He bids everyone goodbye and tells him he's gonna go check on the dear old prince. Though everyone else simply rolls with this. His wife barks that it's just like him to abruptly leave during a family outing. What if he's going? Bulma has a message she'd like him to give Vegeta when he sees him. Tell him that she said he's a big jerk for not showing up. Not arguing. 
The Saiyan locks onto his key and teleports away. At Capsule Corp, the prince is seen working away in the gravity room. As his best buddy suddenly appears behind him. Aggravated, he hisses to know what he wants. Can he see he's busy? And about that, Bulma wanted him to say that he's a jerk for not being with him at the beach today. Vegeta does nothing more than scoff at this. But moving on, Goku thought it would be a good idea to have a little sparring session. However, his rival feels otherwise, chiding he's doing just fine on his own. Goku argues that he knows Vegeta wants to test that new strength of his. Why not now? The simple question causes the prince to relent. If only for getting Kakarot out of here sooner. Back with Beerus, familiar silhouette faces towards the destroyer, who explains that he knows that he has some history with these Saiyans. Their battle in particular interested him, which is why he had a servant Whis summon him here. Whis himself has to admit that this plan is rather cruel, even by the destroyer's standards. Beerus merely utters that he's a god of destruction, not an angel. Destroyers can be cruel at times. Besides, he wants to see just how much power that boy is hiding. If he has potential anything like his father's, he needs to witness it. Unfortunately for him, this is the only way Beerus sees it coming to light. As we said before, his trigger seems to be the loss of life. So, show this man his target. The angel complies. Beerus then beckons, what was her name again? With minor hesitation, it's Fidel. A name that now rings a bell for the deity, the wife of the Saiyan Gohan. That is his target. The boy has grown quite strong since their last encounter, so Beerus has given his visitor here a portion of his own power, just enough to overpower Gohan's current strength. But does he think he can handle it? Officially revealing Cell, he chortles with pleasure. With that, Beerus instructs Whis to take him to Earth, who does so without complaint. Tapping down. Whis laments that he's done what Lord Beerus has asked of him and brought Cell to Earth. As you may have noticed, he himself isn't too fond of this plan, so he will not be assisting in finding Videl's location. Given his sadistic nature, the Biodroid merely replies that he understands, likely happy to hunt her down from scratch. With this, the angel departs, leaving the rest to him. Cell grows an evil smirk as he focuses on his goal. He tells Gohan he's coming. Meanwhile, back with Goku and Vegeta, it appears the Saiyans have just finished with their sparring match. Stretching his arms, the latter told him he wouldn't regret a quick fight, who has to admit that Kakarot being here wasn't a complete waste. Which brings Goku to a big question. He inquires if it's cool for him to just crash here tonight. He'd really like to get a little sleep. But why? Is his wife mad at him or something? She's always mad at him for something, but that's not it. Either way, Vegeta doesn't care and the answer is no. But why not? Because he said no and it's his house. Prompting Goku to actually agree with Bulma from before. Vegeta can be a big jerk sometimes. Who simply leans into the accusation and hopes the door hits him on the way out. As our hero closes the door to the gravity chamber, he runs into Bulma. She asks if Vegeta's in there. Who comedically snorts. Yeah, in there being a jerk. She smiles and figures Goku would know better than anyone by now. He tells her they just got finished sparring and they're both exhausted, so he's going to head home. But it was great seeing everyone at the beach today. With that, the two finish their pleasantries and head their respective ways. As he arrives in his front lawn, he yawns that he's ready to grab a shower and get some R&R. &R. Bad news for him, Chi Chi's already waiting for him at the front door and screams his name. Causing him to sigh, here we go. Which doesn't make his situation any better. In the city, the Sun family arrives home with Krillin. Fidel thanks him for tagging along, but it's late, so she's going to put Pan down for the night. Her husband asks her to give their daughter a kiss goodnight from him. Turning to Krillin, he questions what was it that made him tag along anyway? And the truth is, it has to do with that mystic or ultimate form of his. It's quite unique. He saw it during the tournament and it was the first time he ever got to witness it up close and personal. Krillin was just wondering if maybe he could teach it to him. And that's all? Sure, that's no biggie. Though we shouldn't expect too much. 
Piccolo only helped him enough to be able to unlock it to get through the tournament. But Krillin believes it'll be plenty of help. Focusing. He taps into the form for a second. Just long enough for someone to sense his location. With a hue of pride, Gohan asks Krillin what he thinks. Who believes his friend has come a long way? How about the two of them race back to his place? It'll be a great opportunity to test out the speed of his. They can get back in no time. An idea Gohan's totally down for. But of course, Krillin smirks that he gets a 10 second head start. Blasting off. The saying gives him a fair countdown. As he leaves, he's completely unaware that his life is about to change forever. His wife, Adele, couldn't have asked for a better day. Though as she lies her head down for a nap, she can't help but wonder where Gohan went. Ten minutes go by before she hears a knock on the door. She figures that's probably him. Recognizing the monster all too well from his worldwide antics during the Cell games, she cries out, this can't be! He's supposed to be dead! With the others, Krillin laughs that even with a head start, Gohan still beat him here, but he guesses he shouldn't be surprised. And given Krillin was in a car, we shouldn't be either. Gohan assures this was fun and all, but it's late and he should be getting back home now. Turning around, he thinks to himself that he doesn't normally leave Pan and Videl alone at this hour. He should hurry. With Goku fresh out of the shower, he's ready to finally settle down for the night himself. But he can't shake this sudden, terrible feeling. Hopefully, it's just the exhaustion. At Capsule Corp, Vegeta also gets the feeling something isn't right. Though seeing his wife already fast asleep, he figures it's probably nothing. As Gohan makes his way into his home, he wonders why the front door is open. Upon calling out for Videl, there's no answer. He begins to grow concerned and calls out to her again. Dashing around, that's when he notices Pan is also missing. What's going on? When he hears the cries of his daughter. To his horror, Cell has taken them both. He snarls out to his executioner that he's grown. Gohan argues this is impossible. He killed him. And yet, here he is. As the monster's grip tightens around Fidel's neck, the Saiyan screams that he doesn't know how he's come back, but he's going to let his family go right now. With that condescending tone, the Biodroid mocks that he's in no position to be making any demands. He takes this moment to go into a bit of a monologue. After he was obliterated by the Saiyan child, he had a lot of time to think when he was in hell on just how he would seek his revenge if ever given the chance. If he were ever able to escape his eternal prison, and out of nowhere, that very opportunity presented itself to him, one he couldn't simply pass up. Of course, he feels no obligation to go into any further detail, but he's sure he will find out more soon enough. His goal was to only kill Gohan until he learned he had a family, and it hit him. Why not kill them all? As Fidel's consciousness begins to fade, with her final breath, she's able to whimper out that she loves her husband. As Cell ruthlessly kills her and tosses her body to Gohan's feet, he taunts him that he knows what he must be feeling right now. Anger, hate, frustration, but above all, helpless. Helpless that he could do nothing to save his wife. Now here he is, holding his child, a beautiful baby girl. He thought to himself, who could kill such an innocent child? With tears in his eyes, Gohan begs him not to do it. In the Highlands, Piccolo too wonders why he's sensing Cell's energy. There's no doubt that Gohan killed him during their battle years ago. It's impossible he'd be resurrected. Maybe these times of peace are beginning to play tricks on his mind. When his most recent energy blast settles it, Cell or something like him is definitely back. This key isn't lost on Tien and Shoutzu either, bringing back horrible memories of the chaos the android caused. The former tells his friend to stay put. He's going to check this out. And in town, Yamcha gets his grub on at a local restaurant. Scarfing away, the food here is amazing. He's definitely got to. 
his evening is also interrupted. The server takes notice of his demeanor and asks if he's okay, who does his best to play off the situation. With great timing, she hands him the check, to which he pulls out the first bill capable of covering it, telling her to keep the change. He too flies away to investigate what's going on, leaving her rather confused in the process. Finally, back around to Krillin, he tucks in his own daughter for the night. Going to the fridge, he pours himself a cup of tea, causing his wife to question when he's coming to bed, who promises soon, right after. Just like the others, Cell's key rips through the turtle student like razors. As 18 asks what's wrong, he already knows it's Cell. He doesn't know how, but it's definitely his energy. Which is impossible, Gohan destroyed him ages ago. Krillin knows this, but there's no mistaking his key. If it is him, the others have already sensed him by now too. He tells her to stay here and look after Marin. He wants to check this out, hoping he's wrong. 18 hopes the same, only pressing he be careful. With Whis peering in, he inquires if Beerus is satisfied with his plan so far. The destroyer smacks his head in regret that he only told Cell to kill the wife, not the child as well. However, he should have known who they were dealing with. It's no surprise that the Cell creature has a personal vendetta against the Saiyans. Especially Gohan in particular, since he was the one who destroyed him. Goku, nor Gohan, will take this lightly should they find out about it. Beerus rolls his eyes at the Saiyans still don't even know that it was he who ordered Frieza to destroy planet Vegeta. They'll never find out about that and they'll never find out about this either. He only hopes he's right. Well, something's confusing Beerus. He was told that Gohan gets his strength from the loss of life. Yet Cell just killed his wife and child and he does nothing while Cell laughs at him. The angel assures that it's merely his mind processing what just happened. But while he's busy processing, Cell is surely going to attack. He better do something before he... As something catches both of their attention. With Cell back for revenge and instilled with the power of a god of destruction, how will Gohan handle the loss of his family? Does Cell even stand a chance? And as Beerus cross the line of no return, for our heroes. Heavy dark clouds begin to form overhead as lightning clashes through the sky. Even the earth itself starts to mimic the mood of this tragedy and the chaos that must be swelling within Gohan's mind. So once again inquires how it feels to be helpless and saving those he cares for. First his father, now his partner and child. Is there no end to his failure? All he had to do was the bare minimum in keeping his family alive. How pathetic. The Saiyan weeps as he clings to his wife's lifeless body. He did fail her. He failed her and Pan both. Just as the others find their way to the battle. While sensing his arrival was one thing, it's a completely different story seeing this monster up close again. During their first meeting, he was a force of unprecedented might. What he is now doesn't even compare. He takes his sadistic satisfaction in seeing all the Z Fighters once more. He chimes that it appears that only two are missing from the Dural gang, albeit the only two which matter, Goku and Vegeta. But something tells him they won't take long. While he does this, Piccolo runs over to fearfully question if he's too late, undoubtedly already able to sense the lack of a life force. This is Fidel. And what about Pan? Where is she? Cell is happy to inform that she's dead too. You monster! How could you kill a defenseless baby? <laughs> I'll admit it may have been a bit much, but it was the perfect way to get back at Gohan for destroying me. And I must say, it felt really good. Finally becoming aware of what's going on, Goku shoots from his bed and senses that something's definitely happening with his son. His key is going wild. Putting his fingers to his forehead, he knows he has to check it out. There's no way this could be good. And already sprinting towards his key, Vegeta wonders why Gohan's power is rising like it is. It must have something to do with what he felt earlier. Something has to be going down. Arriving. Goku shouts to know what's happened to Videl. As a familiar timbre cackles. Ah, Goku. How good of you to join us. Like the others, he can't believe this is happening. How is he back? And where's his granddaughter? Struggling to accept it, Piccolo tries to explain what's happened. Pan, she's joyfully chiming in, 
So believes the word he's looking for is. Dead. <laughs> Screaming out after him. Though Kubello is that he doesn't care how or why he's back. All he knows is he's going to make him pay for the life he took from Videl, and most certainly the life he took from his granddaughter. As the Namekian offers to take Videl back to the guys, away from here. He apologizes to Gohan. As Goku attempts to likely suggest his son sit this one out. Yeah! You'll pay for this! Gohan, wait! Stopping the half Saiyan with only one hand. How? There's no way he should be this powerful after all these years of being dead. The monster mockingly closes his eyes to enlighten our gang. He can easily see Gohan has gained some phenomenal strength since he himself has been away. However, he too has acquired some new power as well. As Gohan is one shot into the mud, Goku rushes over to check on him. An ecstatic cell screeches that this is what true power feels like. On Bino Store Heroes, Beerus has gifted him some of his own strength. Kneeling, the Saiyan inquires if his son's alright, but he's not conscious. Goku swears he's gonna make Cell pay for what he's done, both for his family and for himself. He steps over to the Abomination, and Cell questions how the son of his is doing. From the looks of it, he appears to be taking a little nap. Better wake him before too long. He's going to miss out on all the fun. Before snipping that he's aware his old foe has reached new heights. Believe it or not, he's been filled in on quite a few things they've all been up to the last decade or so. Seems like you blink on this planet and it's unrecognizable. Either way, Cell wants to witness Goku's new summit firsthand. Going straight to blue, the android actually finds this quite impressive. But now it's his turn. Displaying a purple hue, likely to reflect the destroyer energy which now flows within his body. The villain chides that this is true power. Getting suspicious, Goku only knows one person, at least in this universe, who has this kind of power. But how in the world could it have any relevance to sell himself? This is all profoundly bizarre. His adversary scoffs, that's enough talk. He's waited longer than the Saiyan can imagine for this. It's time for the rematch to commence. With the deities, Beerus grumbles that this isn't what was supposed to happen. He's already well aware of what that idiot can do. More than he'd even like to know. The Whis questions how he thought this would unravel. Did he really think Goku would sit by and do nothing? Gohan getting knocked out in one hit didn't exactly leave much room for anything else. Of course, he was hoping that his son would have retaliated. He wanted him to tap into that so-called hidden power the angel spoke of before. Instead, the opposite happened. Cell dealt with him with ease. This might be true, but it's not over yet. It's very likely things may change as the fight goes on. After all, when's the last time they witnessed a battle simply progress from A to B? But it must be said, however, Bear should remember that this was his idea, and he himself just assumed things would go according to plan. Yet that poor baby named Pan was killed. It's not rare for the Destroyer to play things fast and loose, but this may have been a grave misstep. Who himself admits that casualty in particular is quite unfortunate. Even he has pity for an infant. And it is true that all of this was his own doing. So how about this? Should things get too out of hand, he will intervene. There's no need for the Earthlings to suffer much more because of this. Although this somewhat pleases Whis, the god continues. Speaking of things getting out of hand, it looks like Goku is having some trouble with Cell. It's as if Cell's learning to control what little portion of power he gave him. Actually, he somehow multiplied it. The angel goes on with some insight. This Cell character was created from the genes of Goku and Vegeta, not to mention several others. But when those two in particular reach a new level, they do everything they can to master it as soon as possible. That would explain Cell's ability to control the power Beerus gave him. In all reality, the Earthlings are quite fortunate they were able to defeat him so swiftly the first time he came around. Had things gone even slightly differently, the planet could have easily been conquered by Dr. Jiro if given a little more time. A fact the god doesn't appear to have considered before, leaving us to question, how fast would Goku or Vegeta progress if given a Hakaishin power-up? 
Catching his balance, Goku already knows this isn't good. His power is just too much. And to make matters worse, he's still totally depleted from sparring with Vegeta and isn't anywhere near 100%. If he was, this would still be a pretty tough challenge. His enemy quips to know what's the matter. He hopes he doesn't plan on quitting like he did last time. After all, this isn't a tournament. It's revenge. Krillin checks to make sure if everyone else is seeing this too. Goku is having trouble with Cell and it's like he hasn't even broken a sweat. This battle isn't going the way it should be. Tien brings up Goku's new form from the Tournament of Power. Why doesn't he just use that? If the gods applauded him for achieving something even they themselves couldn't, Goku should be able to take out Cell with no problem. Piccolo agrees, but the only problem is that Goku hasn't mastered it yet. He may have reached the highest form of Ultra Instinct, but he can't tap into it at will. Even Cell notices that Goku's running out of gas. He offers to make it easy on the Saiyan and simply end it right now. Although he knows he doesn't have much energy left, Goku figures he'll put the rest of what remains into his next attack. Kaioken! As our hero utilizes the Kaioken, the android is curious what he plans on doing with this dying gasp. Take this! Give me your best shot, Goku. No, not again! Hitting Cell with the same instant transmission Kamehameha combo as he did during the Cell games. He has to be obliterated. The others also wonder if that did it. Is it over? Or at least did it do some damage? But neither. The invader is able to block the attack with a key shield. Cell cackles if Goku really thought he'd fall for that same little trick again. Poor shame. This tracks back to what Whis was saying about how Cell is made from the same genes as Goku and Vegeta. If either one of them would likely adapt, so would the android. As our hero tries to power up another Kaioken, his body gives out. His training from only a couple hours ago took too much out of him. He's not prepared for a battle like this so soon. The android laughs that he put up a good fight as he did before. But once again, he loses. Now it's time to put him down for good. Defenseless, Goku wonders what he can do. He's in some real trouble. What? Just as he did against a lesser android. And Frieza. And Zamasu. Vegeta intervenes at the last moment to save Goku. He condemns his rival that you'd think after the Tournament of Power, he would have been able to handle this. Who figures, yeah, he screwed this one up. The prince smirks that Kakarot may have never defeated a god. But he has, clearly signifying he very much so recognizes this energy source. And so was wondering when he'd show up. Who scoffs, almost rhetorically, asking how he's come back. Last time they saw him, Gohan blasted him into oblivion. Furthermore, how did he obtain this new power of his? There's only one person in this universe with key like his. Echoing back to Goku's thoughts from before. Silent, likely under the threat of Beerus. Vegeta figures if he has no answer, that's fine too. This little reunion is going to be rather short-lived. Which is a rather bold statement coming from Vegeta of all fighters. However, Cell is intrigued to see how far he's come in all this time. Finally speaking up, Goku thanks his rival for the save, but they both know that neither one of them is at 100%. Who brushes this off as predicted? Well, Cell is ready to begin as soon as possible. The prince knows Kakarot's right. He doesn't have any energy to waste, so he's going to give it everything he's got right now. Without facing him, he instructs Goku to inform the others that he will handle this. And since there's little choice otherwise, our hero heads back to the sidelines to join his friends, wishing him luck. Sporting that never-ending confidence, the android quips if Goku couldn't defeat him. What chance does he hope to have? Last time they met, he couldn't even lay a finger on him. Little known, Vegeta indeed has something Goku does not, and his days of always being a full step behind from his rival are long over. 
staring on, the villain admits that his foe isn't as weak as he once was. This is quite the power boost. As we lay eyes on Super Saiyan Blue Evolved, the form he unlocked during the Tournament of Power. The prince scowls for him to save him. He doesn't need his pity verifications and isn't seeking this fool's approval. Either way, Seligan asks if he's ready to commence. As Vegeta takes an early advantage, he ridicules what's the matter? Is the android having trouble keeping up? who admits that the second Thought Saiyan is putting up a much better fight than Goku did. But he already seems to be slowing down. He's got to finish us now! Giving it everything he's got, he takes the same strategy as Goku and puts all of his ki into a single blast. A cell shield begins to crack. He's doing it, but can he finish him off? Even Cell himself begins to grow a bit worried. But out of strength, the prince is unable to push through. Leaving both Goku and Vegeta completely drained of energy. The monster chortles, that last attack was quite dramatic, doesn't he think? For a second, he was actually worried. Goku rejoins his ally to see if he's okay, who's mostly only focused on the fact that he almost had him. Just a little more and all this nonsense would have been over. As above, Cell continues with his vile nature. He narrates that both Goku and Vegeta have failed. How should he dispose of them? Without any other option, Goku asks if there's any way he'd be willing to do the fusion dance. But even if they were given the opportunity, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Gogeta also likely wouldn't have much strength left himself anyway. Piccolo shouts for everyone to listen up. They might have to step in to offer aid to the two of them. But aid them? How? Tien doesn't believe their power would have any effect on them. Krillin seconds this. But they can't just stand here and watch him die. When we return to Gohan, still lying unconscious on the ground, he has a vision of his loving wife cheerfully nudging him to wake up. With Cell putting our greatest heroes on the ropes, will Gohan wake up and unleash the power Whis believes he's capable of? Or has this just been one giant misstep by Beerus? Looking on, Beerus comments on how both Saiyans have failed to bring down Cell. He says this almost apathetically, or as if he never considered this being an outcome. We says that it looked like Vegito is on the verge of a breakthrough. He nearly finished the job. That was only the case until he gassed himself out. It's unfortunate, but he has to admit that he's glad to see they've both been defeated. Now maybe they'll finally get to see what they've been waiting for in Gohan. Speaking of whom, it seems he has at last regained consciousness and is starting to move. And it's about time. The destroyer ushers Whis to take them both to Earth. He wants to have a front row seat for this power he's spoken so highly of. The perfect life form continues to mock him, jostling that two of the Earth's greatest heroes, helpless to defend their planet. Turning to Vegeta, Goku shouts that they have to think of something fast, though he's equally at a loss. Piccolo removes his cloak exclaiming, that's it. He doesn't care if he dies. He already failed to protect Videl and Pan. He refuses to just stand here and watch Goku and Vegeta get killed too. As the Namekian touches down, Cell is so glad he decided to join him. This makes things a little more interesting, even if only minutely so. Our greatest hero isn't sure this is such a great idea though. Cell's too powerful for the two of them in their current state. He doesn't believe Piccolo will stand any chance whatsoever. But if the two of them die, they'll just destroy the planet anyway, so it's not like he has anything to lose. Which couldn't be more true. Although Vegeta doesn't know about the two of them, but he doesn't have any intention of dying today. Agree! The humans stand by uncertain what to do. They might have beefed up a little bit for the Tournament of Power, but if Goku can't even touch them, what chance do they have? Even if this was the old Cell, it probably wouldn't be good. 
Just like Piccolo. Tien reminds they might not be able to do much, but if they fail, they're dead anyway. He says they join in and see what happens. Beats uselessly standing around. Getting himself hyped, Krillin agrees. He's gonna go out. He wants to go knowing he at least tried to do something, inquiring if Yamcha's in too. Who cracks his knuckles and smiles like he was just enjoying a great dinner before all this started. If that's his last meal, so be it. With the plan agreed upon, the gang moves out. Is this the best you three have to offer? Everyone wants to get involved now. No matter. I'll dispose of all of you at once. After this attack, our heroes are rendered immobile. Cell grinds out to know where they were before they were so rudely interrupted. That's right. He was thinking of just how he was going to get rid of the two of Goku and Vegeta. He wanted to take his time. But he thinks he'll just destroy the entire planet now! But one hope still remains as Gohan calmly walks onto the battlefield. Cell cackles. Look who decided to wake up from his little nap! Furious. He tells Cell that all he ever wanted was to live a normal life! Do normal things! Live peacefully like so many millions of others on this planet and get to live his own life on his own terms. But ever since he was a child, something or someone was always taken from him by someone who felt so entitled. And now somehow, he's come back and taken his family from him. smirks that it seems they've arrived right on time. Looks like they're going to get their front row seat after all. Calling out for both he and Whis. Goku asks what they're doing here. Being on with excitement. The destroyer must say this is quite an impressive transformation. It seems his assistant was right about Gohan. Perhaps he has the potential to not live forever in his father's shadow. He has devastating power locked away. It just needs a window which to escape. The angel's glad that he's taken a liking to this new form. It is quite a power-up for the young Saiyan. His only concern is that since Gohan hasn't had proper training in a while, there's no telling how long his body can sustain such strength. He could easily hit his limit before this fight reaches its natural conclusion, or it's entirely possible he could simply destroy his body. As the battle rages on, this is something they'll find out soon enough. Relishing at the moment, the android has waited a long time for this. All this time he's been toiling away in hell, fantasizing about this exact scenario. As Gohan shouts, he will win! He will make him suffer! Come then. Hopefully this hubris doesn't come back to bite him like it did the first time around when he was a child. What? most recent power-up, Gohan appears to be overwhelming his adversary. Iris joyfully mutters that this boy is special. Whis agrees, and given their state, he takes it upon himself to heal the Saiyans. Now that they're back in working order, they have to go help Gohan, causing the Destroyer to interject that they will do no such thing. But what does he mean? His son needs him! Iris remains firm on this. Gohan will fight Cell alone. 
Does he understand? of the battle continues. Goku calls out for a child and doesn't understand the god's logic. Why won't he let him join the fight? This isn't some training session. This is a matter of the sake of the earth. Both he and Vegeta could take Cell out now that they're at full power. And he dares to mention that he thinks he already knows why he won't give him an answer. When Cell transformed and showed off his new god power, Saiyan knew there was only one person who had that kind of key. It was instantly obvious, actually. And that person is Lord Beerus and Lord Beerus alone. His daughter and long granddaughter were both killed. Did he have anything to do with this? The pompous god he is. Beerus simply ignores Goku's yelling and keeps his eyes elsewhere. That's when Cell takes notice of all the commotion. He wonders what the two of them are doing here. On silence. The android knows he won't be able to handle both Goku and Vegeta with their renewed strength. Something has to be done about them or this will quickly get out of hand and he'll miss his opportunity. Shockingly, Beerus turns to explain to them. The truth is, before Cell interrupts them bellowing that he doesn't know how they got back on their feet. But they won't stop him from exacting his revenge on Gohan. Only in his base form, Goku calls for everyone to look out. Satisfied with this surprise attack, the monster believes that he surely got him all with that. Though his wording is peculiar here. If you were only trying to kill Goku and Vegeta, wouldn't he say both and not all? Wait, we see from a distance the group is fine. A shield of energy radiates around them, protecting its inhabitants from the blast. Not only this, but Cell's actions have caused the real god of destruction to grow a bit nettled. Cell interrupted him as he was speaking. His eyes glow as he scowls, that was rather rude of him. Getting in his face, Beerus knew from the start that he needed to tread carefully in reviving him. He's well aware of his narcissistic sadism. Now, he believes that wielding the power of a god has gone to his foolish head. Does he need to be reminded who it was who gifted him these powers? A statement that one of our heroes is equipped to hear in full clarity. Cell merely stares back at him in fear and frustration, as the silence speaks louder than words. The destroyer scoffs that he didn't think so. This power can be taken away as easily as it was given to him. He has no idea the gap which separates the two of them. And if he steps out of line again, it'll be the last time. Almost as a prod, Goku wonders aloud what the two could be talking about. Of course, Piccolo knows exactly what's been said. Vegeta prompts him to speak up. What are they saying? With brief hesitation, he thinks they should ask him themselves, although Goku in particular isn't going to like it. Who already kind of figured that. This leaves us to wonder how his and Beerus' dynamic will change. Who goes on that from this point forward, Cell's only concern is Gohan. That's the reason for all of this. He already informed Goku and Vegeta that they nor anyone else is to interfere in this fight. The android finally responds to admit that's quite generous of him. However, he might be thinking too highly of Gohan. He's already been put down twice now. It wasn't this the same arrogance which got Cell killed in the first fight. Quite frankly, it's starting to become annoying. The god begins to think that perhaps he made a mistake in resurrecting him and he should put him down permanently himself. Gohan comes blasting out of the rubble. He screams to Beerus that Cell is his. His alone. With this, the Destroyer takes his leave and bids Cell good luck. Who doesn't think he'll really need it?
making the most out of his second win. Beerus is overjoyed. This fight is very entertaining and he's amazed at seeing what Gohan can do. Had he exhibited this prowess during the tournament, things might have been a lot easier. He then turns his focus to Goku. He scolds that he failed to inform him how strong and talented his son was. Who argues that he always knew he was strong, but he also always needed a push to get to the next level. Not to mention he hates fighting, something he himself didn't realize until his fight was Cell the first time. Being transparent, the god then comments on how that brings him back to why he and Whis are here. The Saiyan asked if he was involved in Cell's resurgence. He directly states that was indeed his question. And the truth is, this whole thing was his idea. So this means he's responsible for what happened to Videl and Pan? Here, smugly takes credit for Videl, but there is never any intention of killing the child. That one's on Cell. Whis has to reveal that he too played a part in this as well. When Lord Beerus awoke from his slumber, he spoke of how excited and happy he was that their universe won the Tournament of Power, and how intrigued he was with how strong he and Vegeta had become. It was at that point he informed the Destroyer of his son, Gohan, and that he once surpassed him when he was just a boy. Whis told him that the loss of life was a strong motivator in unlocking Gohan's power. Yidi shines back in. That's when he decided to bring Cell back. He hired him to kill Videl gave him a portion of his new power to push Gohan to a new level. But he didn't anticipate killing the infant. For that, he is sorry and will offer his apologies. But an apology? Apologies won't bring back Videl and Pan. Which is why Whis took the liberty of locating all the Dragon Balls, but they can be wished back once this is all done. However, that still doesn't excuse their actions. After everything they did to win the tournament and keep their universe from being erased, he goes and pull a stunt like this? When Vegeta shouts to get his attention, asking what he wants. The prince understands his anger, but he needs to see the bigger picture. Bigger picture? What does he mean by that? He tells him to just look at his son. He's going up against Cell with god power. When was the last time he showed any sign of Saiyan pride other than the tournament? Even then, he preferred his human side more. He was weak and becoming weaker, completely neglected his training. Lord Beerus' methods may have been extreme, but he can see plain as day that the results don't lie. His son has reached a new level that he never thought he would. And that's when it hits Goku. This new level really is phenomenal. Beerus adding that was the purpose. Had it not been for him, Gohan would still be a weak little schoolboy. A Saiyan must embrace his heritage. Otherwise, he'll be next to useless in battle. Whis can tell that he's still quite uncomfortable with this entire situation. And of course he is! Pan was just a baby! Again, Beerus reminds her death was not intended or anticipated. They will both be wished back and returned as soon as this ordeal is over. Goku lets it be known that he is grateful they gathered the Dragon Balls for him, but no child should ever have to go through that. Having had it with his arguing, Vegeta again calls out to his rival. They can't change what happened. All they can do is move on and wish him back. But just try telling that to Gohan. He doesn't know how he's going to react when he finds out about this. Which even Whis thinks is a good point. But while Beerus says that he's aware he'll be angry, they will cross that bridge when they come to it. With the rematch between Gohan and Cell heating up, just how much longer can Gohan's body hold out in this new form? And will he forever hold a grudge against Beerus for doing what he's done? Or find a way to forgive him? As Gohan attacks Cell in a fit of rage, the monster remarks that he's impressed by what he sees. Cell grabs him, giving him a big hug as he adds insult to injury, citing he's the same helpless boy from before, but this time his father can't help him. He comments that things aren't looking good for a hero. Eris agrees. He needs to think of something fast. Krillin is shocked by the crazy situation as Piccolo worries for his favorite student. Goku once again shows faith in his son, remarking that he knows how to get the job done, and his training isn't something that's easily forgotten. Cell urges Gohan to give up, mentioning reuniting with his family and death as a cruel motivator to surrender. Cell reminds him of the day he crushed Android 16, and advises he listen to that Cretan again after all these years. Let it go, attempting to completely demoralize him.
Gohan responds with a massive headbutt, as Cell's plan painfully backfires. Krillin is delighted to see his ally free of the villain's torment. Beerus, seeing the massive impact, is confident that Cell is experiencing some intense pain, as so he smiles at the turn of events. Goku thinks now's your chance. That's it, Gohan! But our protagonist seems short of breath. Take this! He draws back and launches a barrage of energy attacks towards his enemy. Cell is visibly stunned by his power as the blasts make contact. A cloud of debris forms on impact. Gohan reaches through the smoke, shocking Cell as he grabs him by the throat. He struggles for air as Beerus observes the shifting tides of battle. The Saiyan angrily questions Cell about the familiarity of the situation as he utters, This is exactly how you had Videl before you broke her neck. I told you, I'd make you suffer for that! As he buries his fist into his body, losing himself to his emotions. He summons the memory of everyone suffering due to Cell's wrath. Android 16. Bronx. His father. Lo and Yamcha are shocked at their friend's brutality. They haven't seen him like this since he became a Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta's visibly frustrated. He reminisces on how unbelievable it was for him to ascend to that level at such a young age. Beerus is surprised to hear this fighter was such a brute as a child, but Goku reassures he was a brutal warrior as a boy that day. Goku remarks on how his son's power really went to his head back then, and unfortunately, that may be what's happening now. Vegeta says back then, he showed signs of the true savage nature of the Saiyans. As Beerus' eyes glow with excitement, hmm, I see, he utters in delight. Cell grows frustrated as he suffers the pain from Gohan's blow. Who, consumed by rage, asks him if he feels helpless as he revels in his vengeance. Biodroid coughs off blood as he says to the warrior in front of him. So there's that confidence I remember. And it was the same overconfidence that left you helpless with one arm! Solar Flare! Suddenly, he blinds Gohan using a surprise Solar Flare. Goku looks upon the battle with concern. Oh no! Gohan got caught by the Solar Flare! Krillin is understandably worried. Yours, however, is pleased by this effective strategy. Cell's power as a destroyer creates a purple hue as his aura shines on our heroes. He reassures him that if he desperately wants to be reunited with his family, he can help him do just that. Along with the rest of the planet. Our heroes show concern one by one as the battle seems to be coming to a destructive end. Guys, this is crazy. It's too much. Krillin's right. This is getting out of control. But there's nothing we can do. He's right. Vegeta is stunned by the sight of such destructive power. Goku reassures everyone they don't have to do anything. He has faith in his son just like he did back before. He will overcome this and defeat Cell. Beerus waits to see the result of this confrontation, to see if Gohan truly has what it takes. Cell assures that he will soon be with his family. But Gohan can't allow Cell's destructive power to consume the Earth. The villain revels in the idea of finally having his vengeance, finally ridding himself of this planet which has plagued his mind for so long. He promises this is the end as he orders him to accept his death. Now die! Gohan fires a massive Kamehameha cell. A cell's pure destruction power collides with Gohan's energy. We shows concern, remarking that Gohan may not be able to handle a blast of this magnitude for long. 
This may be the boy's greatest challenge yet. Beerus agrees. Piccolo is also worried. Goku shows faith in his son and remarks, Come on, son, you can do it. I believe in you. Cell attempts to dishearten Gohan by summoning the failures of his past, citing that he failed Android 16, Trunks, his father, and now his wife and child. He urges Gohan to just give up, who thinks of everyone he has let down, viciously telling himself that he has been a failure, even to Videl and Pan. He vows never again as power surges through his body. What? No! This is impossible! As he confidently destroys self for the sake of everyone on Earth, our hero's Kamehameha reaches the heavens. Goku's overjoyed to see his son has defeated a god. Beerus remarks that technically speaking, Gohan did in fact accomplish just that. As Vegeta, in typical fashion, points out to Goku that's something he has yet to accomplish. As he falls to his knees, despite everyone's delight, Gohan shrieks in agony and apologizes to Pan and Videl. The next day, the Dragon Balls are gathered as promised by the angel and Lord Beerus. Goku thanks him as they prepare to summon Shenron. He asks Gohan if he's ready, and of course he is, as ready as ever. So Goku calls out for the dragon. Shenron is summoned and introduces himself formally. Goku wishes to resurrect Gohan's beautiful wife and daughter. Shenron assures everyone that the wish has been granted disappears into another realm. Gohan rushes home looking for his loved ones to find his dream life is no longer a nightmare. As he's reunited with his family, he apologizes as Videl reassures him everything's fine. They're home now. We begs the question, are you satisfied with the result, my lord? Beerus is more than satisfied. Gohan showed traits of a true warrior. There's no telling how much power he has locked away. Who? Still worried about the possible endangerment of his loved ones, asks Goku to sit with Videl and Pan as he approaches the destroyer. Gohan says he knows how Cell was brought back. He admits to him that what he has heard is the truth. However, before he can finish, Gohan interrupts that he wasn't done. Whis is alarmed as the god tells Gohan he just had his family return to him, and he shouldn't ruin it. The Half Saiyan announces that he may not agree with Beerus' methods, but from this point on, his family's protection comes first, which means he has a lot of work to do on himself. He knows now that he's no match for him at his current level, but if Beerus were to harm his family again, his new life's sole purpose would be to take him down. The Destroyer comments on his admiration for Gohan. Everyone's surprised. He asks the Angel to train him, and Whis quickly agrees. After his intense battle with Cell and experiencing the loss of his family, Gohan realized that he must sacrifice his studies and dreams of becoming a scholar, or rather remaining a scholar, to focus more on getting stronger for the sake of his family. This fight has proven that whether he cares for combat or not, fate has placed him in a position where he must set his own feelings aside. As such, he departed with Whis and Beerus to train on their world, leaving behind his wife and child for the greater good. There who will undergo the same practices which caused his father and Vegeta to ascend to levels unimaginable. After only a few months of training, Whis and Beerus notice how fast Gohan's power has accelerated, thus intriguing Beerus even further. It would seem the rumors regarding the potential of the Saiyan aren't misplaced. He truly is something special. Sparring with Whis. The angel instructs him not to forget what he's been taught which is that he must strike with a calm mind instead of emotion, the very thing which boosts his power. He can have all the muscles in the world, but it's pointless if he allows his emotions to consume him. Then things like anger and confusion will take over, and his opponent can take advantage of that, causing him to inevitably be defeated. Exactly the answer his teacher was looking for, bringing them to the conclusion of today's training. The pair tap down as Beerus chimes that Gohan is catching on rather quickly. However, 
there still appears to be an aura of hostility between the two. The Saiyan does thank him for the compliment, albeit through gritted teeth. Whis points out this tension. After all, what's to be expected after what transpired on Earth? The God relents that it's understandable. Although, he has already apologized and his family is alive and well. He knows Gohan is smart enough to not let a little tension change this. Frustrated at the audacity, but not wanting to escalate things, Gohan merely utters, of course not. Which is what Beerus thought. Alas, the Saiyan decides if it's alright with Whis. He plans to go meditate for a while. The angel doesn't protest. And back home. Piccolo does his usual Piccolo things. He can't help but lament that if only he had gotten there a little sooner, he could have done something. The horrors of events prior is on him. The emotion that overwhelmed him at the loss of Pan and his family being put through such terrible things. If he had been there, then maybe, just maybe he could have prevented Videl and Pan from dying. The Namekian's tired, tired of feeling useless. Whenever he had to get stronger, he was only able to do so through fusion. First, it was with Nail in an attempt to defeat Frieza, then it was Kami. We glance back to those events. But no more! He may not be a Saiyan and will never be able to catch up to Goku or Vegeta. But he will find a way to increase his strength without having to rely on anyone. There will come another time where he's needed, and when that time comes, he'll be ready. First, he thinks it's time for another session in the hyperbolic time chamber. As he blasts away to better himself, we rejoin Gohan, already in the middle of his meditation. Beerus comments how he's grown quite strong in his little time here. Whis agrees. In fact, he progresses at a rate even faster than Goku or Vegeta. A very impressive feat. That's when the Destroyer gets an idea. He commands him to bring Goku here. He wants him to compare the two and see where Gohan really stands. The Angel agrees to do so with a smile on his face. With Goku. The Grandpa happily enjoys his time with Pan and Videl. Though something abruptly catches his attention. As Whis enters the room with no inhibitions, he offers his greetings to all present. Videl turns to him and says hi in return. Our hero is curious how Gohan's training is coming along, which is exactly the reason why he's here. By the wishes of Lord Beerus, he would like Goku to return with him to examine his current strength, when compared to his. Enough to catch the attention of the Saiyan, although that does really sound fun. Does he really think his new strength can match Super Saiyan Blue? It hasn't been too long since he left. It's an awfully big stretch to think he already caught up. And be that as it may, Whis believes he will be surprised. Also, he doesn't think they should keep Lord Beerus waiting too long. They all know how impatient he can be. Which is true. Figuring whatever, they can go. But before they take off, it all reminds Goku to come back and let her know how her husband's doing and how much progress he's made. Who wouldn't dream of leaving her high and dry? The pair make their way to their destination in no time. The angel alerts that he's returned with the Saiyan as requested. Goku offers him the casual salutations. But the destroyer doesn't want to hear it. What took him so long to get here? Causing Goku to instead offer his befuddled apologies. Beerus explains that the reason he's called him here is to... Cutting him off, Goku finishes his sentence to compare Gohan's new strength to his own. Whis already told him, and that's correct. Sorry to disturb his meditation, the angel brings it to Gohan's attention that his participation is required for a moment. Sensing his father's arrival, and able to make the obvious assumption, he beckons that Beerus would like to compare his strength to that of his dad's, to see where he currently stands. As this is confirmed, Gohan is happy to oblige. With the sun approaching, Goku can already tell how much different this Gohan is versus the one who left a while ago. This should be good. First, he's just happy to see his dad. Being alone here without his family has been something else. Goku's happy to see him too. Asking if he's been made aware of why he himself is here. And if so, does he think he's ready? With confidence, Gohan announces that he is. 
Goku powers up shouting that they begin. Now controlling his previous enraged mystic, or enraged ultimate form, Gohan makes it known to all, though possibly mostly to himself, that he has at long last ascended. This is Evolved Mystic. His father is immensely proud of him. He's improved so much in so little time. He's gonna hold his own a lot better than the last time they sparred. Gohan smirks, not only that, but he's gonna beat him. Goku presses if that is the case, then he better give it everything he's got. I plan to! Meanwhile, aboard a particular spaceship. Sorbet makes his return, apparently resurrected from Earth. He questions his leader if he'd like to plot a course for said planet. Frieza scowls at the thought of those Saiyans. He may have fought alongside of them to secure the safety of this universe, but only because it belongs to him. It is still his to rule. As a shadowy figure pans into the scene with a familiar timbre, he chortles that it seems Frieza has had a little trouble since he's been away. Though the Emperor is not asking for his help, nor for his opinion on the matter. The figure replies that he may not request it, but they both know he needs it. Revealing Cooler, who comments that based on all the information he's been given, Frieza has failed to kill these Saiyans on multiple occasions, so it might be time for a different approach. With the reemergence or even reimagining of Cooler, what exactly could he have in mind? Even if he's able to match his brother in terms of strength, would they even have a chance against Goku? Let alone the combination of Goku, Vegeta, and now Gohan. Meanwhile, back on Beerus' planet, our young half Saiyan warrior is sparring against his father. Possessing newfound power, he seems to be going toe to toe with his dad, even in Super Saiyan Blue. Goku's happy to see Gohan has grown so much stronger in so little time. However, before he can finish telling him, he's interrupted by a vicious knee to the gut, painfully making him aware he should be on his guard. Gohan knows that smirk all too well. Let me guess, you're smiling because you're excited. Am I right? He asks. I sure am, Goku responds. Our young warrior notices that his attacks didn't seem to phase his father, or maybe he's just too excited to notice. We can see that Goku's about to take this fight more seriously. As Beerus mentions that, much to his disdain, the Saiyan does tend to hold back. His hypocrisy in full view as a reflex on his first fight with Goku. Beerus admitted to our hero that he wasn't even close to using his full power, leaving Goku to swiftly let him know he was only going about 80% himself. The Destroyer God quickly showed him that holding back against him was a great way to make him angry, as steam shot from his ears. He nearly ate the mortal alive for holding back his full strength. Beast, perceptive as always, knows the truth. Goku is just testing Gohan's new power. Annoyed and irritated, Beerus demands he stop toying with Gohan. The young warrior is concerned as he asks, has his dad really just been playing games? The Saiyan assures to his child that his foe is exaggerating. He was just feeling him out. But now, since Beerus wants him to go all out, and seeing himself in his son, assumes he wants that too. Gohan notices his father's stance. It's the same one he used against Cell. Now he has no doubt that his father's ready to give it his all. Goku's quick to tell his son, however. He doesn't think he's prepared for the Kaioken technique. So Goku announces Super Saiyan Blue full power as Gohan's next challenge. Father and son are warriors. Power up to their max as their auras collide. Beerus is excited for some real entertainment, as Whis prepares to see how far Gohan has come. Meanwhile, drifting through space, Frieza orders a henchman to set a course for Earth, but before it can be done, his elder shoots down the command. Sir? Detesting this mutiny as he snarls at his brother. This is his ship, and his crew only takes orders from he, and he alone. Cooler slights his sibling mocking if he only wants to rush to his death. By all means, he's welcome to set a course for his own demise. 
Um, sir? As confused as ever, the crew doesn't know what to do. Frieza orders his underlings to leave him to his kin. <laughs> Unit scurries away in fear. The leader of the, maybe still, Armored Squadron has been made aware his little brother achieved a new shiny golden form. Frieza goes on to tell his older brother that when he was resurrected, he was forced to train for the first time in his life, which indeed led to such a form. Cooler scoffs as he says, let me guess, as soon as you achieved your golden form, you rushed to Earth to fight them, didn't you? Showing his experience, he tells him he should have learned to regulate his power before he rushed off for revenge. He can see in his face this is exactly what he did. What a shame. He tells his brother to summon his minion and set a course for quote, that distant planet. Upon being asked what for, he's told it's time for training. Not that he himself will need it, but Cooler knows his brother will. Insulted, the Emperor makes his brother aware that a lot has happened since he hasn't been around. He shouldn't act so confident like he's the stronger of the two of them. Oh, the other Arcosian retains his cocky nature, excited to find out one way or another. Let's begin! Back on Beerus' homeworld, an explosive father-son battle has begun. As it rages on, Gohan cracks Goku's skull with a vicious headbutt. Whis takes notice of Gohan's ferocity, as Beerus comments he fell that one from all the way over here, despite not actually being in the battle. short time training with them has definitely paid off. The destroyer is quick to interject that Goku isn't finished. But, Whis knows never to count the legendary Saiyan out. Goku compliments his son on his moves. He's very impressed. He wants to know if he's ready for the Kaioken technique. But his dad is quick to let him know he's not quite there yet. Our young hero seems annoyed. As his father reassures him not to worry, he's about to take things up a notch or two. As Goku raises his energy again, he chortles to his son. Let's see how you can handle this! Bring it on! Repetitive! I'm here! Over here! Damn it! Gohan can't seem to track his father's movement. Things start to fall out of favor for our young fighter. He's too fast. As Beerus and Whis notice the turning tides of the battle once again, the former wonders if Gohan is down for the count. But the Angel, aware of Gohan's potential and his drive to prove himself, hasn't completely given up on him. The Saiyan asks his son if he's had enough. Of course, Gohan isn't finished. Goku shows some fatherly pride in him, as Gohan questions if he's capable of more. With that, the Super Saiyan Blue tells his son, All right, here I come! Gohan closes his eyes and reflects on the past couple months he's been training with Whis. He must calm himself and react without the distraction of emotion. Manages to surprisingly dodge his father's attacks and bring him down. Beerus and his servant continue to be impressed by Gohan. The same can be said for his father. Goku comments that just when he thinks this boy can't get any better, that's when he surprises him. We sees this as an omen that Gohan's final test has come. Beerus is curious to see how long he'll last. To 
truly are something, Goku says with pride. As Gohan prepares to face the wrath of the Kaioken, Goku's brilliant red and blue aura displays the sheer power a son must face. Gohan knows this is it. He's got to give it everything he has. Beerus and Whis have been very entertained thus far, but the fight is coming to an astonishing end. This is it, Gohan! You wanted the Kaioken! So now, I'll show you the power of the Kaioken! As he throws a deadly attack into his son's chest, Gohan seems like he's had enough. Goku assures him that he's made him proud. But he still has a ways to go before hanging with the likes of himself and Vegeta, even with the progress he's made under the gods and his new ultimate form. Gohan tells his father, however, that he doesn't get to decide his limits. Gohan's power explodes, and Goku lands a direct blow on his son. But much to his surprise, it barely leaves a mark. After a flurry of attacks, our hero is grounded by his child, who decides he has to put everything he has left into his final affront. Let's see how you handle this! Yeah. All right then. Beerus figures this will decide the match's outcome, as we simply watches on with a smile. and back to his base form. Goku mutters, Let's see what you can do now, Gohan. Beerus and Whis know this is a problem for their new student. His power is waning, so he has to make his move. <laughs> Gohan struggles with his own blast. Goku appears behind him. He asks him what he's doing. Gohan doesn't think he has the power remaining to stop his own attack. He poured all of his energy into it. Goku tells him to think. What was he told when they were in the hyperbolic time chamber all those years ago? Power comes in response to a need, not a desire. So what is he supposed to do? Causing him to realize he needs to create that need. And with those words of encouragement, Goku tells him to do it then. With this, he manages to avert the deadly attack. Goku catches his son as he falls from the sky and compliments him on a job well done. Beerus, pleased with what he's seen, sees clearly the scope of Goku's son's potential. The Angel and Patriarch agree with Beerus' observation as the battle comes to a close. Frieza's minions announce they'll be landing shortly. Cooler thinks this destination should suffice to test the sibling's current strength. The Emperor makes it clear. Despite how much his older brother doesn't think he needs training, Riza himself knows the Saiyan all too well. They won't be so easily defeated. Cooler reminds little bro that he's the one who took extra measures just in case they ever came across a Saiyan with formidable power. After all, he destroyed the Saiyans out of paranoia. Frieza disagrees. He was just making a necessary decision for his empire. Who scoffs at this idea? Tell yourself whatever puts your mind at ease. He knows he never trained because the Saiyan seemed like the only threat to his rule. Until Namek, that is. The Arcosian leader grows angry as his brother's comments hit him where it hurts. Fuller goes on to say, his point is, he himself has always trained, and as a result, it's hard to take his brother seriously. He's just learned the value of training, 
There's no way the Emperor can keep up. Frieza slights him for talking so much. He may have trained, but he's never faced a god of destruction, unlike himself. The Emperor's minions prepare for landing. It's the stage for our next battle, is set. As the pair enter the new battleground, Cooler comments on the planet's harsh conditions. But Frieza has had enough talk. He wants to see just how much, quote, stronger he is, or at least claims to be. What has all that training in his earlier years done for his power? If he could be honest, he believes this is nothing more than a gutless bluff from his brother. He has always been jealous of him and his standing in the Empire. Who's as ready as him? But make no mistake, the fact he was their father's pet means nothing. It simply goes to show how much of a crutch Frieza has needed over the years. And even with all this help, he's still only a fraction of what Cooler is. And he managed to do it all on his own. With those fighting words exchanged, Frieza orders his minion to take the ship to a safe location. This might get a little messy. Yes, sir! Terrified, they don't hesitate in hightailing it out of there. With the Frost Demon squaring off, what could this new version of Cooler be hiding to make him so confident over his younger sibling? As the events of the non-canon Dragon Ball Z movies never took place here, the sky is the limit. Could his augmented form simply be more powerful? Or does he have something up his sleeve to match Frieza's golden form? Your move. The stoic Arcosian prince waits patiently as lightning crashes all around him. Does he secretly wish to have a rival in Frieza? As these two warrior tyrants match each other, the Emperor also appears pleased with his brother's abilities. It's possible that maybe they both unknowingly crave rivalry based on their kinship, a bond rather than bitterness and hate. While thinking of his next move, he cackles. Oh, how about this? Shooting a barrage of beams, his sly sibling swiftly disperses all of them, almost as if it were second nature. The former compliments him on his agile reflexes. But his elder is merely waiting for him to get serious. If this is all he's got, he's far more disappointed than he imagined he was going to be upon getting into this. It seems it isn't just the Saiyans who crave a good challenge. Could this family reunion be awakening something within these arrogant alien warriors? Or is this nothing more than their already established pride beginning to show? Lord Frieza smiles as he dons a new level of power to unleash upon his newfound rival. He's curious to see just how powerful his long-lost brother is, as a missed opportunity to grow together is redeemed. A change is certainly stirring in the Emperor's demeanor towards his newfound challenger. As he launches at him in full force, Frieza comes off as excited as ever. The eldest of the two Frost Demons catches his little impish brother's blow. Could he have the edge? To his surprise, his arm cracks from the force of the Emperor's attack. He may be getting more out of this experience than he bargained for. Frieza wonders if that attack was too much for him. But his cocky older brother assures that they're just getting started. As he nails him with a vicious kick, sending him flying and crashing to the ground. As he collects himself, Ruler adds insult to injury. That seemed like it hurt. My turn! Powers up to max as a glowing energy similar to the sun itself surrounds his body. It seems a battle between Arcosians isn't so different than a brawl amongst Saiyans, as a familiar pattern begins to unfold. I hope you're ready! The two charge each other with ferocity, as a titanic alien battle continues to unfold on this remote planet. Cooler notices his sibling struggles as he asks if this is too much for him. But Frieza assures him, as he so elegantly put it before. And as energy radiates from his fist, they're just getting started. As Cooler feels firsthand the fruits of Frieza's labor, his training had a much bigger effect than he thought. The Emperor feels that this sparring session may have been a good idea after all. He seems to be enjoying himself and wonders if his brother feels the same. 
the change amongst the two coldest. Ruthless and unforgiving monsters in the universe becomes more apparent, as this war for the title of superiority amongst brothers and descendants of the mighty King Cold continues to play out. The Emperor, with his pompous royal roots coming to the surface, apologizes insultingly for his rude behavior, questioning his sibling if he's trapped beneath the rubble. It seems he's still confident that he will be victorious, despite a few impressive developments from his sibling. As Cooler blows away the rubble, he commends his kin on his power boost. He finds him pretty impressive, despite being without his newfound golden form. Though Frieza, who has always had a reputation to uphold, assures him that he has no idea what he's capable of. He's been away for a long time. Cooler realizes he may have underestimated his younger brother, a common mistake amongst siblings, as he decides to make things more fun and kick it up a notch. Curious about what he has in mind, Frieza watches as his brother takes on something that appears to be his real final form. As his body begins to expand, grow and reform itself, the monster Sarkozy and lets off a battle cry. As what looks to be his most suitable form for combat begins to take shape, he appears noticeably sharper than before as he mutters to himself, That's much better! The Emperor was under the impression his familial rival is already in his final form, but he never stated such a thing. Still, he feels his elder continues to be no match for him. As Cooler absorbs his little brother's attack with ease, he arrogantly comments that his arrogance always amused him. Repeats history as his brother is sent flying into rubble and is buried as a result. Reflecting on the familiarity of the situation, he finds the repeating events amusing. As Golden Frieza, in all of his splendor, arises from his tomb, Cooler will pay for mocking the Emperor, the rightful ruler of the universe. Lord Frieza, he's about to come face to face with his brother's true might. The elder Arcosian's eyes can almost be seen rolling into the back of his head as he scoffs at his little brother. He always did enjoy making a dramatic entrance. Frieza wonders where his older sibling's insulting behavior is gone as he grovels in his superiority over him. As Frieza is aware from experience, the idea of being surpassed must be overwhelming. He knows that feeling all too well. Cooler. Seemingly and shockingly unimpressed, now sees the full scope of his little brother's golden power. Despite all the fun, the Emperor is ready to put their fighting session to a violent end. Cooler welcomes him to try and end the battle. As he scoffs, Lord Frieza pompously wonders what's so funny. As his monstrous opponent begins to reveal that as a matter of fact, he has a little surprise of his own. He may not have a golden form, but he has his own path to power. Platinum Cooler reveals himself in all of his shiny glory. Frieza's amused by this. He thought gold might be a bit much, but Platinum really takes the cake. In fact, he thinks he can see his reflection right now. His Cooler's ego is in plain view. Be that as it may, he enjoys his new look, and given these cold-hearted warriors are at their peak, they're ready to give it all in the heat of battle. The conclusion to this overdue question of superiority amongst Frost Demons is about to commence. As the true successor to King Cold's legacy is ready to be revealed, Cooler urges his surprisingly respectable opponent to bring this fight to a close. The Emperor couldn't agree with him more. Shockwaves from their battle reach the demon ship, shaking the entire thing as the Frieza Force sweats over the possible outcome of this explosive new rivalry. The henchmen and the crew are grateful for the space between them in the titanic struggle. But as powerful as their Emperor is, maybe even the strongest in the universe as far as they can tell, they still fear Cooler might be just as powerful, if not more than their ruler. 
Although Frieza himself never spoke of this terrifying figure, it's clear they have a relationship of some sort. But is this reunion for the best? Can they lead each other to greater heights? Or will they be each other's downfall? As the battle rages on, the metallic Arcosian is impressed that his junior can hold his own as long as he has. The Emperor assures him that he's been through his fair share of fights. Cooler observes that there must be many more battles his sibling hasn't informed him of. Reese is impressed as well, and he knows him too well. As the action cools down, he has one question for him. He was listening as his other reminisces on his loss to Goku after his resurrection. The Space Lord wants to know how quickly he was able to regulate his energy regarding this new form of his. Prompting him to boast of his insight to the importance of that aspect of his level of power. There's no point of achieving such strength if you don't know how to sustain it. Bringing annoyance to Frieza. But once your opponent learns you cannot sustain your highest power, you will simply have to bite his time and attack when you're vulnerable. Cooler complains that all these battles, and his lesser never learned one of the essential aspects of combat. As disappointing as that is, he'll show him anyway, so we better pay attention. Frieza smiles whenever he's ready. He himself is ready to learn. Meanwhile, back at Capsule Corp. Krill and Pan and everybody else are enjoying one of Bulma's feasts. They thank her, but she's happy to do it. Fidel just misses her husband and wishes she could be there with him despite his motives. Suddenly, her wish is granted as Gohan makes his grand entrance along with his father and Whis and Beerus. She can hardly recognize him and cries tears of joy. She informs him how much his absence has been felt. He assures her that she and Pan were all he ever thought about as he grew stronger. Lord Beerus and Whis were a big help. He even got to fight his dad. Vegeta's surprised to hear that Gohan actually fought Kakarot. And he's really shocked to hear Goku is forced to use the Kaioken on top of his blue form. Could Gohan pose more of a challenge to him than even Kakarot? It bemuses the prince that he was able to make such progress with only a few months. They're telling him that was enough to ascend to a new level? This confirms the suspicions he had always hoped for amongst half-breeds, since before he even came to the Earth. Goku relates that he could hardly believe just how much potential his son had before fighting him himself. But once they started fighting, man, he's come a long way. As Vegeta approaches the young Saiyan, Goku rattles, uh-oh, here we go. The prince demands to see his new power, but his wife has other plans. Everyone's gathered to enjoy themselves. There'll be no fighting under her watch. Bulma's sure that Gohan wants to spend this moment with his family and not jump straight into another battle. Beerus and Whis agree. It's time to eat. Goku's on the same page. But Gohan tells him not to worry. He will show him later. He does owe him a rematch after all. Vegeta, as excited as ever, hasn't fought Gohan since the events of Namek. Now that he's older, this should be interesting. Maybe even just the opportunity he needs to further break his limits. Floating through the cold depths of space, Cooler hopes what he taught Frieza is put to good use and that he never makes the same mistake again. The Space Lord assures his newfound comrade he's grateful. His power has increased drastically, so it should make the coming battle with the Saiyans most interesting and their chances for victory higher than ever. Cooler agrees. However, he can tell these Saiyans are quite formidable. They did take down Frieza himself on multiple occasions after all. Snapping back, his little brother advises that he hold his tongue. Frieza's tolerated a lot of disrespect from his sibling, but reminding him of his defeat is not something he will tolerate. This amuses Cooler as he tells him to chill. He won't be so upset after he's had his vengeance, will he? The evil ruler of the galaxy knows that the job ahead is no easy feat. They have three powerful Saiyans to face. Two named Goku and Vegeta. But Vegeta? Cooler asks if that's the son of King Vegeta to which the other Arcosian confirms his suspicions. He finds this a bit interesting. His father was rather weak, yet he claims his son is one of the formidable Saiyans. Frieza informs 
Naturally, the son of the king is a very prideful Saiyan who is easily driven to new heights through his pride. However, Cooler ironically, and with little self-awareness, sees this as a flaw. But it's advised he not drop his guard to the prince, or he will take him down. Like he did to you. This insult fails to make the Emperor's blood boil, and he's quick to let him know that it wasn't Vegeta who took him down. Although he did come close. It was our hero, the one and only Son Goku of Earth, the bane of Frieza's existence, who bears the Saiyan name, Kakarot. A name which jars Cooler's memory, isn't that? And it is. He's the son of that arrogant fool, Bardock. This motivates him further as his Frost Demon brethren goes on to explain that. Even worse, the third Saiyan they have to face is Goku's son. He's known as Gohan. To which Cooler questions if he's as skilled as his father. Explaining with a story, the last time Frieza saw the spawn of that Saiyan, his power had increased. But no, he is not on the same level. Trying to strategize, the previous believes the obvious move would be to take him out first, since he is the weakest, though that's easier said than done. The Saiyans possess the ability to sense power levels without the use of scouters, so they're going to have a welcome party as soon as they enter the Earth's atmosphere. The good news is, at least one of these two craves a good challenge. Vegeta, as a prideful Saiyan, doesn't play well with others. This is something our villains think they can use to their advantage. He won't fight unless absolutely necessary, and most likely watch as they deal with Goku and his son, supposing that's the flaw Cooler spoke of before. Senseless pride. There are also a couple other fighters who will present aid to Goku, but they can be easily disposed of if necessary. If they're going there to kill the Saiyans, Cooler's sure it'll be necessary, which is fine with Frieza. He demands his underlings to set a course for Earth, who are quick to comply. Back home. Goku's chowing down as he comments on the delicious food. Gohan feels the same as he feeds Pan, especially good after being away for so long. Whis agrees. Bulma's feast never cease to amaze him. Beerus comments that this is the reason why this planet will always be around. The scientist thanks everyone for their hospitality. Then Gohan asks Videl to take Pan as he prepares to face Vegeta. He promised to show him his new power. And they all know he can get impatient. And ain't that the truth? Perking his ears, Beerus questions Whis if he hears that. Seems like they'll be treated to even more entertainment. Having just ate, they can now relax and enjoy the show. As Gohan approaches Vegeta, a long overdue rematch is about to begin.